I really appreciate our current church. We know what is spent down to the penny. Hey guys, welcome to another video. We are discussing today a topic that has been brewing a lot within, I think the, the, the church, there's a lot of different information out there. And, uh, this is this is obviously a video that's gonna be heavily directed towards Christians, towards believers, towards people who genuinely have the faith. But we're talking about the necessity to make sure we are under sound teaching, we are listening to sound worship and following sound doctrine. We wanted to start with the teaching specifically because I think in the church for a good, I mean, you can go back so many times, there's this, this propensity to create heroes or celebrities out of pastors or gifted speakers or different stuff like that. You have your Mark Driscoll's, you have your Carl Lentz, you have your Matt Chandler, you have et cetera, et cetera. But unfortunately what happens so often, not always, by and large, these men end up being exactly what they are, flawed. Mm. Some of them to a greater degree than another. You know, I wouldn't necessarily put Carl Lentz in the same boat as Matt Chandler, but they're both flawed because of different things that have happened and arise. There's a lot of damage done. If any of you have re seen the, the recent documentary on Hillsong, you know, you saw detailed what happened at New York with, with, with Carl and it was out in the public, right? He, you know, he, he had an affair and he come because of that he was fired and, and there's repercussions for that. There's consequences to that. There's a lot of people who are disillusioned. There's a lot of people who are hurt. There's a lot of people who are scarred because of, of those events. You know? And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we tend to put these men on pedestal. I, I want to really encourage believers. I want to really encourage Christians to not do that, to understand the dangers that come in that, to understand that, okay, yeah, these men are gifted or we've been raised up to, to be these pastors or whatever, but pay attention not only to what they preach on Sunday, but as much as possible to the character they display, which is easier now with social media and the fact that so many of them make their lives more public. Like if you follow, if you would have followed Carl, there was, should have been a lot of red flags. Like I don't think a pastor has any business being that close to the celebrities he was close to, or I don't even know if I would consider him a pastor, but more like a motivational speaker. Or 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 some of these pastors, the way they, they dress or the way that some of them, you know, be wearing Louis Vuitton, $800 sneakers and different mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I'm not saying that, you know, they it's not possible for them to, but when it's consistent, there should be red flags for us, you know, and we should be really careful. You know, in the case of Matt Chandler, like, you know, there was a time when I really en enjoyed a lot of his stuff. And I'm not saying that I, if I listened to a message of his, I still wouldn't. But then there's definitely the, the whole, you know, woke intersectionality CRT stuff that I, I can't, I can't get behind. I don't see how it, how it fits into scripture and how it fits into a worldview that has Jesus and God as its center. For us, it's it's become one of those things that's like, like I, the church we currently attend, I I, I enjoy the, the teaching that I that I get, you know, but I'm never gonna put one of those, one of the different elders up on the pedestal. I'm never gonna be like, oh man, this guy's the end all be all. Mm -hmm. they, as long as they continue to preach from the word, faithfully, diligently, and have sound doctrine, then I'll listen to what they have to say. And I will be like the noble Berean that will receive the word joyfully Mm -hmm. as my friend Gabe, when I recently had a conversation with him, told me about. But not just receive it joyfully, then I will go search the scriptures mm -hmm. to make sure it li what they said lines up with scripture. Because mm -hmm. there's two parts to that. I can't just reject outright. I have to receive joyfully, but then I have to check. And if it doesn't match up, then at that point, I reject. Make sure that the people that you allow to influence your life, or like for a while, for me, I had like Timothy Keller. I don't, I can't do Keller anymore. You know, there's so much of what he espouses now that I can't get behind. Same thing with like, you know, a Paul Piper. Tripp, you know, Piper to a degree, mm -hmm. you know, Chandler to a degree. I, I have to be wise, I have to be circumspect, I have to use discernment. That's my encouragement to you guys when it comes to these people, to understand that they're not infallible and use discernment. I, I think there's steps. I, I don't think that one starts uh, in the position of pastoral, like being a pastor where you are a teacher. I, I, I would hope that if one comes into this, this role of being a teacher, understanding the severity and the, the responsibility, the judgment that comes from being a teacher by God. I don't, I, and I wanna hope that they start in this humble approach to teaching and to leadership of their church. Um, I do think that there's red flags 
that we need to be conscious of as the the saints of the church. I really appreciate our current church. We know what is spent down to the penny. Transparency is huge. Transparency in your church, if it is not there, and if you cannot access your your head pastor or your elders, you might want to question that and measure that. We did not take that as seriously um, as maybe we should have for many, many years. And we are thankful to be in this place now um, where our church is teaching us really good stewardship mm-hmm. of being uh, a Christ follower and, and, and being under leadership but also being a saint and being a, you know, checks and balances and having both. Yeah, because when you when you really think about it, you know, this might not apply to like, maybe like, you know, a guy that you like listening to his messages to, you know, like, yes. I, like I, I, I love Bodhi, Bodhi yeah. Bach. Yes. Like that, yes. that, that guy's, that's, he's, that's my boy, you know? I know that's not my pastor. That's just right. somebody that I'm listening to. But when it comes to the elders at my church, I'm submit by me being a member, I am submitting myself to, under their authority. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that these are men of character that I'm doing that to. Yes. Because, Have them over for dinner. because if mm-hmm. not, that's on me. Mm-hmm. That's not on me for not doing my due diligence. Making sure that the church that I attend is one of that you know that that has integrity and character behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other aspect of it, it goes hand in hand with it is the idea of, of sound doctrine, you know, because there's so much again, there are things that we're gonna differ on, you know, when it comes to maybe like ecclesiology, like you know, end times and whether you're a post millennial or a pre a pre millennial or you know, historic pre mill, this different things like that, right? That's fine. But when it comes to like the essential what we would deem the essentials or different things like that or doctrines that like just do not jive with scripture at all, like you need to be aware of that. That and that comes with being in the word, that comes with being in a good Bible teaching church, being in the word yourself, being in the word with others. Um, it's a, it's important and it's necessary. And I know a lot of people who are just unaware of these things and they think it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Mm-hmm. It does matter because if you're not aware of it and you start attending a church or you started hearing these things that sound good but are not, then your doctrine and your theology is way off. Mm-hmm. And that 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 has huge implications for your household, for the way you live your life, for a lot of different things, you know? So I know a lot of really well-meaning people who have been basically uh, led astray by, for example, this whole idea of CRT, right? Because for the to the church by and large, CRT has been presented as well. If you think racism is bad, then you should support CRT. And any any Bible believing Christian is going to be like, well, of course racism is bad. It's a sin, right? Mm-hmm. And so they attach themselves to this to this teaching of CRT, not understanding that CRT is just one part of a long train. And behind that train is stuff like LGBTQ and social justice and, you know, basically a lot of these anti-God following intersectionality and victimization, this idea that I'm a victim, so therefore I, you know, I should be able to do whatever I want or, you know, there's there's no way that I could be wrong because I'm the victim and that's the oppressor and all this stuff, right? All of these different things that I think if a lot of Christians took the time to understand them and to study them and to research them, we'd be like, no, I'm not okay with all that. Mm -hmm. But by hitching themselves to the racism part, they are espousing all this. They are agreeing to all this without even realizing it because they're all connected. No, but most people are unaware of this. And that's why I think it's important to educate yourself, to be rooted and grounded in, in good doctrine, biblically first and foremost, so that that way, when these wolves come dressed as sheep, you recognize them. So at the end of the day, Christian, this is this is just an encouragement to you to make sure you're following sound doctrine. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're not elevating any man any higher than you should be. You know, yeah, respect your elders of your church, but make sure that they're worthy of that respect. Make sure they're men of integrity and character. They're mm-hmm. not perfect. Mm-hmm. They're not perfect, but it has to be someone that you're willing to submit under. You guys have any comments, questions, concerns? Disagree, agree, don't matter. Put the Comment comments below. down below. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, I've, I always say this to 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 the people that know me personally that have my number. If you disagree with me and you want to have a conversation, always open to having conversation. Mm-hmm. Always open to having dialogue. Um, those of you that know me know that I, I, I'll be fair enough to listen to what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just be fair and listen to what I have to say. Yeah.